Hey guys, we're in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. We're smoking lake trout, literally. This is gonna be spruce smoke and maple glaze. Find out how all this is gonna end up in our bellies. I'm with Jeremy. We're out being outfitted by Red Lake Outfitters. And guys, we're catching and cooking our way through the park. Stick around. I was curious to know if I could turn the sugar back into syrup. You can turn the sugar back into syrup? Yep. You can, so there you go. <laughs> hey guys, I got an important announcement. Ridge is sponsoring another video. That's right, Ridge. It's the everyday carry. Shrinks down your wallet to practically nothing. You can see how small it is. It's got all my cards. It's got my money. It works fabulously. I've been testing it out. I've shared it with friends and they're impressed by it too. It's got great reviews. So thing is, next week they're gonna give away five carbon fiber wallets to the winners of the contest. There's gonna be a little bit of a riddle. You're gonna have to pay attention. The wallet works really good. Pinch the back, fan your cards, grab the one you want. Got a money clip right here. So next week, November 6th, will be the finale of the Red Lake Outfitting Woodland Caribou trip. November 6th, episode 12. There'll be a riddle in the video. You'll solve the riddle. You have to find my email address and the first five people to correctly answer the riddle will win one of the five Ridge wallets. You have to email me. Do not message me. Do not put stuff in the comment sections. I will not be using those as viable entrants. All right, guys, let's get back into the video. Oh, and if you don't want to mess around with things, just use the discount code. You've got 10% off your purchases. That'll be down in the description. Not even a head shake, eh? No, if this is a fish, I'd be surprised. Wow. It's a log. It's gotta be a log, dude. Well, the suspense is killing me. Ah, it's a log. We've been fishing not, all day. It's not even, not even a head shake all the way in. I've had pike do that before. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for it if it's a pike. Yeah. Coming up too high to be a pike. Not even didn't want to go down. It's a log. Gotta be a log. He says it's a log. I say it's a what log. Do you guys think? A big, heavy, dang log. Or a branch. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wait. it's moving. Is it? Yeah, it is moving. It, it is. It's, it's alive. It's alive. All right, we're going to beach this, I think. Yeah, is it too big to. Well, no, it's not too big. Here? Hey, it's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. That was like a log the whole time. Well, we can play We're, it off on the beach. We are anyway. drifting, the wind's taking us right to the beach, but I don't know, like, let's just. I don't know, let's do it in the beach. Well, the longer you leave it on that jig, the more likely it is to shake loose. Oh, it's not a, it's on the wobbler. Oh, it's on the big wobbler on the treble, yeah, yeah. This is a big fish, Jer. It's ah, flipping. I'm excited. Flipping out now, I can see it back there now. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not, it's not a big fish, it's. No. A lazy pike? A lazy laker. Oh, it's, it's, it's a nice laker. Yeah, right, stay down, dude. Stay down. Can the wooded beardsman land this oh, laker? Why is it? He's been wanting one. On me. He's been wanting one all day. And we have put in our hours. Oh! oh! Yes! <laughs> And as right I, at the boat, I just I, lost yeah, the Yeah, you lost the lure there on him. Oh, man. Hey, that's a good feeling. That's a hard-earned laker right there, <laughs> man. I'm pretty excited about this fish. That is going to be good. Now our Voyager meal is going to have some fish to go with it. Hey, Red Lake Outfitters, thank you very much. That line there is actually fire from a forest fire that's happening over here blowing toward us, putting brown smoke. There's a piece of ash from the fire loading. Just caught it on my paddle. Crazy. Is it there? Yeah. It came from a long way away. Can't see it on the camera, I don't think, but. No. Yeah, that's the first piece of ash we've seen. Yeah. In weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been out here for more than one week. Piece of ash. Yeah. Yeah. I wondered if you were making a joke about that. <laughs> I wonder if there'll be more coming down. Here's another. Oh, that might have been a bug. Hmm. Look, it's so it's so muddy behind you. Yeah. It's like 
the most toxic air you'd ever see. It's worse than downtown pollution center bill. That's one lake trip for dinner. I promised you guys I wanted to show you how to cut up a trout so that it would be um, boneless or at least butterfly because I didn't show that before. So that's going to be the aim of this one here. So we're doing it as standard up just up here behind the neck on both sides and then we're going to grab the guts here we're going to pull that all the way to the front pretty simple straightforward i find in these bigger trout it likes to get hung up on the stomach so we'll cut off the stomach at the front it's going to get rid of the organs here too and then I've also found that the gill plates, which we want to remove, we don't want to cook with the gill plates on. Can't eat the gill plates. A lot of people say it has an off flavor to them. I wouldn't notice, but some people do. So that's the gills, bye. We don't need gills. The gull is going to eat those gills right in, right away. This one has, um, some eggs but not they're not big enough to eat so the gull can have that and there's a swim bladder we keep that sometimes and then down here there's a, a piece of tissue that holds the uh, dorsal aorta together it's the guts or the bloodline I should say some people call it the mud line but it's not mud it's blood and that'll give a not a very good flavor Okay, so that's all the stuff we don't want. The rib cage is here on both sides. The rib bones go all the way out to here. What we want to do is fold it out. So let's say we start over here. We're going to go on either side of that anal fin all the way down to got that wasp wanting to join us for dinner here. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side because we want to butterfly this properly and expose all the muscle and meat to smoke. We need to be able to open it all the way up. So that's the easy step. So is this he's easy too, but it's not very intuitive. So along the backbone, we're gonna punch through all those ribs in a sawing fashion, and I'm keeping my knife tight to the backbone here and we're through so you can see half the rib is there and the other half is over here I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side keeping tight on the opposite rib the rib is here now, I've never done this before but I've wanted to for some time to try to figure out a way to make this a totally boneless operation so that when I smoke it and I put my flavoring on the meat I don't remove it and I also don't want to remove a lot of the edible portion of the fish at the same time so I have sliced through no, I think I'm okay. I'm just checking to see if there's any rib in there and there doesn't seem to be. So that seems to be working. So I'm gonna continue doing that. You can see the ends, the tips. There's one there. The tip.
tips of those bones. So the idea when you're all done everything is that you'll have a piece of meat that you can just eat. Now my guess is the seagull is probably still going to want to eat this even though it is almost 100% bone, a little bit of meat inside. So now I'm feeling down the meat and there's bone here and this side here has maybe a couple bones here. No, it seems fine. Actually there are a couple bones in that silvery skin here. So we can remove those or we can leave them in there and just fish them out when we're eating it because we won't lose a lot of flavor. But if we put maple, valuable maple sugar on there, you can see how we might lose some of that when we go to eat it. Okay, so 100% boneless here and then the other side and then we'll have a nice cut. And of course we don't need this, complete garbage. And there's gonna be bone there. And then when we're cooked, we have it fully cooked, we can pull this spine all the way out. But we wanna keep it together for now. Jeremy's up there cutting some wood for, some, for the fire. And I have, I got him to cut me a little piece of uh, wood off as a cutting board. So, uh, Last time Jeremy said let's eat the guts and then I, we put the guts on like this. Well, it's actually the stomach. The guts are down here. Um, put the the stomach on whole and it was uh, chewy. So he had the idea that we turned it into little ringlets for calamari and also the inside wasn't cooked. I should mention that too. So if you want to eat the stomach then Take it and at least score it down here so you can split it in two. And then it'll cook all the way through and all that gooey stuff on the inside won't be part of your meal. So what I'm gonna do is dice it. Little medallions, I guess. So that's what those look like. Would you eat that? We do. We have. All right, let's get up to the fire. I think Jeremy's actually preparing a different meal for tonight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this on the smoker and we're gonna probably eat it for breakfast. I find smoked fish tastes really good the next day if you can keep a little bit of heat on it. So I'm just gonna Add a little bit of that my wadobo spice. That spice is gonna draw in as the fish dries. If you uh, try to put the wadobo spice on after you've smoked it, it's just gonna fall right off. Before we go to bed, we'll have a nice fire, nice bed of coals, and we'll just let it smoke. Gonna bread up those trout stomachs. Just a little bit of corn flour mix. All right, trout stomach. Yeah, it's gonna be hot. Fresh off the fire. Yeah. Cooked. Ouch. <laughs> oh no, it fell on the ground. Oh, gross. You feed it to the gull. So this should be like calamari. You guys like calamari? Yeah. Should. Do we like calamari? 
Yeah. Ouch. You get a rock in there? It sounded like it, didn't it? It was a rock, actually. Maybe yeah. it's because I stepped on them a couple times. Maybe. They're good but chewy. Yeah, they remind me a little bit of uh, pork crackling. All right, on to the main course. Jeremy's got something planned. Stay here. You got to tell people where we're having lentils. Mm -hmm. um, cured bacon. Cured bacon. And water. <laughs> cabbage. Oh, well, that's a side dish. We have cabbage that we've carried all the way around with Lane Caribou. Mm -hmm. And the story behind it is we tried to eat it almost every meal. number one Jeremy's calling this traveler pea soup looks like a dog food but it tastes really good <laughs> <laughs> bacon bits and lentils yeah is that it yeah oh I could have done something else and water I thought there was something could have done something there. else to it I go through it all in detail on uh, my video but it's really just bacon bits and lentils and water is Jeremy plugging his own channel now yeah in case you decide not to I better get a plug in I'm the one. To, I'm the one wildcrafter, by the way. Don't subscribe to him. He doesn't care anymore. No, right? I've got too many subscribers. I can't keep up to the comments. So when you cook your trout, throw it down, flush side down, because you want that seasoning to work its way into the meat. And once that sort of hardens up, you want to check it once in a while because it's going to want to stick to the grate. Flip it over. You can a few times or at least pull it up and make sure that that flesh isn't sticking because that's the part you want to eat. Um, you can eat the skin. I didn't scale this so we won't eat the skin on this one. It's just a vessel for holding the moisture in. And before we go to bed we'll flip it probably a couple times and then we'll make sure it kind of cooks on the back a little bit. Hey guys, you got to check out this ridiculous, ridiculous sunset. Because all the smoke's coming in from those forest fires is blowing out our direction. It's made an insane so sunset, insane color. So orange. This fire is oriented the wrong way, totally wrong way. So the wind coming this way blowing into the fire and uh, providing way too much heat so we had to rearrange the fire we rearranged all the rocks this is like the perfect perfect smoker now now we can shovel wood in here and the trout is in the chimney like seriously look at this the trout is in the chimney so as the fire burns up here it's ejecting the smoke up here this is like the perfect, perfect smoker. All we did is grab the flat rock. There's quite a few flat rocks. So inside there, look at that. You just put a little bit of wood and if we're smart, we just cover this up too with another rock and that will drive and protect all that heat in there. So all night long, we'll be able to smoke our trout with very minimal effort. So every day, or as many times as you want, we check in with Harlan. Harlan is connected to us through a spot. Uh, we are not connected to him through a spot, so he can't give us any information at all, which is exactly why we are where we are versus anywhere else, because people have given us information who have flown in. So this is the spot device. So you've hit the OK button, which is? Down the bottom. Uh, yeah, OK, down there. Yeah. So you hold that. And then it does some blinky blinks things. And this it says GPS. And then once it goes over here, it has mailed it. Yes. So it takes a few moments to mail it. The exact GPS coordinates to our location, to Harlan, in case there's ever a uh, mishap. But this is just telling him we're okay. We don't have to actually yeah. send that. But if we didn't send an okay for like four or five days, he'd be like, uh, are you guys okay or yeah. are you not okay? 
So that's the help button. We press that if we want Harlan to come, but we don't want the police and helicopters to come. Yeah. So he will organize the search crew to come get us himself using airplanes. All right, we're putting our tote to bed like this. I put a uh, door in the front. That's the seal and I put rocks on top here. So we've got this rock funnel and it's funneling up to the top. So all that heat and smoke will be traveling up to the top here overnight. The idea last night was to smoke a fish all night. And it started raining. And I also found that when I came back in the dark, there was a mouse hanging around eating our leftover food bit. So instead of having mushy fish for breakfast, I threw it in the bar barrel overnight. found that it was mostly cooked anyway so it should keep okay even though it's not refrigerated a lot of smoke in it and so that's a uh, smoking is an antimicrobial agent it's bacterial so all we have to do now is heat and eat Last night Jeremy was trying to make a uh, fire from a flint and steel and he had never done one from flint and steel. I didn't know that when he was doing it last night. And then uh, he said he wanted to do it again. So this morning's a good time. Last night I took the opportunity while everything was dry at the end of the day and I collected a really good tinder bundle. So I took dry grass um, for the outside bird nest. There's dry grass all over here, uh, up in the rocks and stuff. So I grabbed a big handful of that and because we would have old man's beard, but this really, it's actually a spot here. There's not a whole lot of old man's beard. That's that, that greeny stuff on the trees. It works really good as a flash tinder. None here. So that's why I used the dry grass. You could use the old man's beard from here. Uh, and then the center, I put really, really fine birch shavings, which uh, are back at the tree. There's not a lot of birch here, but uh, there's always a tinder. So I put that in the center. Not the best uh, bird's nest in the world, but it's got the right ingredients. It's got that, that stick and pull 
from the um, and the oils from the birch bark and then it's got that flash tinder at the back with the uh, dried grass and on the outside it enveloped with uh, thicker paper uh, birch bark which once ignited will hold that flame for a very long time so you can easily shove it into the fire so we're going to switch over here to Jeremy and Jeremy is going to blow this fire blow this into a fire I should say so it'll be his first try his first big try at a flint and steel fire and then we can smoke our fish there we are Mustache burner, flash fire. Promised you guys maple sugar rub, and you guys are going to get a maple sugar rug, rub, sugar rug. <laughs> so there's our sugar. I, uh, it's basically after you make maple. Sh syrup if you keep boiling it long enough it'll get rid of all the moisture and it'll turn into a sugar because that's what's in the tree it's pretty amazing and I made this stuff myself so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump it in kettle here and we're gonna add some water because I think if I put this on the fish right now it will fall off the fish because the fish is dry and I also think that if I would have put it on last night and baked it in it would have burnt because sugar has a very low point of burning and then it's gross so I'm gonna mix this with water and then I'm gonna heat it and turn it back into a syrup The much anticipated <laughs> fresh caught smoke spruce smoked lake trout with maple glaze maple glaze yeah let's call it maple glaze that piece of meat there is syrup on there I was curious to know if I could turn the sugar back into syrup you can turn the sugar back into syrup yep you can so there you go it's now nice and sticky syrup so I just waited till it bubbled and once it bubbled like that's actual syrup now <laughs> all right have a piece I'm kind of full yeah all right that's fine <laughs> <laughs> I'll go off somewhere and eat this in the woods yeah happily She's got the wadobo on there, so it should have a nice a bit of salt, eh? With the sweet, sweet. and salt, mm. that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's pretty darn good. Just dunk it in the syrup. That was worth the wait, yeah. And all the effort in catching it, you gotta try this. Catch yourself a fish. Do it up. Mm -hmm. You know, a piece? Mm -hmm. That's the way you can eat a whole leg trout. And get everything you need from it. Put the fats and the oils and the 
protein and the carbs, it's a complete meal. I just know a few blueberries for fiber. <clears throat> oh, there's blueberries over there. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any question about whether or not we're going to eat this whole thing. No. <laughs> we're eating this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So there you go, guys. Oh, it's so drippy. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate we should put it on the plate. Well, you guys want to book a trip with Woodland Caribou into Woodland Caribou Prince Park? Give Harlan a ring. Let him know you watch this video because he wants to know that him sponsoring us to come out here is working. Uh, this is Jeremy. Don't subscribe to him. He doesn't care. <laughs> subscribe to me. I care. Um, can't have it so that Jeremy has more subscribers than me. He may, but at this point, that'd be awful. Know, eh? it'd be terrible. And then Jeremy can sponsor me to go out and ship. Yeah. So either way, it works for me. Us. Um, do you want me to bring that closer to you again? Yeah, you're like. Uh, and see how lazy and hungry uh, the bear is. Got a piece. I notice how I cleaned up this section here. It's the closest to Jeremy. Yeah, that wasn't fair. <laughs> Have you missed anything? I don't think so. No. We can finally sign off. Guys, go get a snack. You're hungry now. Hmm. I know it. You should have had a snack when you started this video. So go grab something. Go make some pancakes. <laughs> now you have to have pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> go make yourself some pancakes. You know you want to. Mm-hmm. You know, some maple syrup. You can make French toast this easier. And you can still put syrup on it. You have my permission. I don't care what time it is. If it's 2 a.m., just go for it. Wake everybody in the house up. Make have some pancakes too. Alright guys, bye. See ya. All right, every once in a while somebody asks me, how do you upload from the wilderness? Are you still out there? Um, no, actually they don't ask me if I'm still out there. They just ask me, how do you upload from the wilderness? The answer is I don't upload from the wilderness. When I get out of the wilderness, I upload. So, and other people ask how many batteries you keep for your camera. I don't know why you guys are interested in that, but some of you guys are. So I'm gonna make this really, really, really quick for the people that aren't interested in it. What I have is, Long life batteries. Uh, this is a Sony brand battery, it comes with my Sony camera. This will last me six and a half hours. They're worth 250 bucks. I have a second one. I've already gone through two so far um, on day seven. I have one on the camera right now. It's pretty much brand new. I have five and a half hours left on that, says the screen. I have a knockoff brand battery. It looks the same, but it does not work the same. It's, I probably get maybe two hours off this battery compared to the six and a half for the full full ones there's also the battery that came with the camera that'll give me probably two and a half or three hours off that battery and like i said i have the one on the camera already for cards i have here's a 128 gig card i have two 250 gig cards which i've already used not they're not full but i've used them I have another 128 gig. Behind here I have my GoPro cards. Um, they're little mini uh, SD cards and they're just happen to be in a SD case. It's just easier to hold. So all in all, um, I don't know how many cards I have, a bunch. The microphone runs off of a, a, a rechargeable lithium ion USB, but I also have backup um, AA batteries, which I can use also uh, in my flashlights. So my, both my flashlights, three night flashlights, both have AA batteries. One has one, one has two. So it doubles up. So I brought this. And then because I got a new microphone, I wasn't sure it was gonna work. I have my old microphone and it runs off of uh, nine volts. So I have two spare nine volts in case I had audio issues. Audio is huge, huge, huge factor. If you don't have audio, you don't have a video. So that's my gear, that's it. I have one camera. Jeremy has the same camera, but a lesser model. 
uh, so we can share batteries if we need to. He's got a rechargeable system. If you're interested, you can go watch his video. He has giant bricks to recharge his cameras because he didn't want to spend $750 on batteries. But that's what it costs to come out here and film these. That doesn't include the other camera, the GoPro, the GoPro batteries, etc., etc. It's quite a bit of gear to keep me rolling for nine days in the wilderness. Thank <laughs> you.